What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Hope everybody's doing well this evening. Uh, again, I mean, it's it's a beautiful evening. Why? Because hey, we're seven and two. You know, can't really complain too too much. Then they, hey, you know, obviously we didn't beat them by fifty. We know, even though everybody maybe or some people maybe expected that. You know, with obviously seeing the news that twenty to twenty five players uh, were going to be out for FSU. But hey, then they found a way to win, just like this team's done all season. So definitely hats off again. It's great to be here. And be looking forward to a big game coming up here against Wake Forest in the Atlantic Division Championship game. So, uh, as you can see, myself, Layton Smith, we got Michael here. Uh, Macon Adams will be joining us here momentarily. Um, but in the meantime, Michael, so so give it to me. Oh, man, what were your overall thoughts uh, you know, of the game? And then with you being in Florida, did you kind of feel any of the vibes? Are you staying out of that flu bug going around in Florida right now? Yeah, I avoided all that, thankfully. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, it, it was again kind of almost like last week, kind of an ugly win. I mean, it ended up being two scores. We, yeah. you know, struggled in that third quarter, but first half was great, and then fourth quarter was great. Um, you know, if you told me at the beginning of the season we'd be seven and two at this point, uh, I'd be pretty happy there. Um, mm -hmm. With not, wouldn't expect our game against Wake next week to be the kind of the, the the ACC Atlantic Division championship game sort of but um we're in a, we're still in a good spot yeah. um i mean defense won us the game like they've won us a lot of games this whole season so mm -hmm. um can't complain too much no yeah i mean I, i've definitely for sure i mean was 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 a was a big win again to at least get to this point um but real quick too uh, too before we kind of talk a little bit more about this game so for those who are tuning in make sure again to send us a comment let us know who's tuning in let us know your thoughts uh questions about the game overall um you know and, and uh one thing too which i wanted to go ahead too and kind of explain again because it's kind of a weird situation and, and i know that we received a couple questions so i'm sure that maybe some people might still be curious about it was again kind of that wake forest carolina situation i wanted to go ahead and nip that in the butt because i knew that was going to be a question which is again how is that considered a non-conference game and and again this is actually something last week during the live stream that actually um i actually thought i actually was confused yeah. i was like how is it not a conference game they are in the same conference so um but but yeah, so they uh, again. But I, I guess we actually did this with Duke about you know ten, twelve years ago, yeah. something like that. Back when Russell Wilson was here, where we did like a, a home versus home uh, matchup, basically as a contract. So it's basically for basically Wake Forest and Carolina are choosing instead of signing a contract with somebody outside of the conference, they decided to sign a contract for a non-conference series with a team in the conference. So because it actually started back in 2019, UMC and Wake Forest played at Wake Forest. And then this is the last other part of their game or their contract, mm -hmm. which is they're playing at care or which they played at Carolina this year. So definitely a weird scenario. But um, again, at the end of the day, you know, basically the scenario goes like this. We, you know, we, we, you know, basically if we win, then, you know, we, if we went out, then, then we're in the Atlantic, uh, we're in the ACC championship game. If we win, uh, if we beat Wake Forest and we beat Syracuse and then, uh, Wake Forest loses to Clemson, which is a definite possibility. They play at Death Valley. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, then we are automatically going to the AC Championship game. But if we lose to Wake Forest, then we're pretty much eliminated from from the ACC yeah. title game, which is a blow. But hey, again, hey, we're, we're we're in this position, so definitely excited. But again, jumping back though to the Florida State game. So I know that I, we kind of made this promise to one of the fans. I think it was Rusty Rusty Oral, if I'm not mistaken. But we we promised that we would bring out Trenton Gale. First thing, because yeah. I mean, he was the, in my opinion, he was the player of the game. I mean, he, I mean, like he, he was, he was so good at, at, at changing over the field and changing over possession. There was, you know, I think there was one that, that was down at like the one yard line and there was a couple yep. that were downside the 20 and, and I mean, just had a heck of a game yesterday for sure. I think he was one of the keys. And honestly, I think that he was one of the big keys for us winning that game, you know, because it really put Florida State in some tough positions. Yeah, yeah, especially when, uh, you know, on drives where our offense stalled out a little bit and you can have him come in and flip the field and then make mm -hmm. make them go 90, 95 yards on some drives where our defense is obviously the strongest part of our mm -hmm. team. So put them in a good position that even if, you know, Florida State gets some big plays, which Mackenzie Milton, uh, he – didn't play too bad he made some big plays to move the ball but you know 
if they even if they if they start on their own inside their own 10, they can still have a 50 yard drive and still have to punt the ball. So, yep. you know, field position was huge. And yeah, Trent Gill was amazing. Yeah. And, and I mean, again, he's he's averaging so far 46.4 yards per punt, which is in the top 25 in the country. Um, and he's had a long this year of 65 yards. Uh, and again, he's only a junior. And he's from Hillsborough, North Carolina. So he's a local guy. Yeah. And he's still got another year, you know, with us. So, uh, again, I mean, just has, has been absolutely unbelievable this season for sure. I mean, definitely should be an all ACC um he should be on the all ACC team this year for sure at the end of the season. Um, and you know, but again, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, Hey, let's win AC championship. That is the goal. Let's get there. Let's make that happen. But one thing, which I, I, I do want to ask you them, Michael, and again, while we're waiting on making here. So if I told you before the game that between Emeka Mezzi, Thayer Thomas and Devin Carter, there were going to be a combined three catches between them. Yeah. Would you have thought that was, a possibility? No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, it could have been a possibility, but I wouldn't think we would win with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah we, no. They would have combined three catches, and we would still win the game. Yes. By by two touchdowns. Yeah. No way. Um, mm-hmm. But that's good to see younger guys and you know guys that we haven't had to rely on um, mm-hmm. stepping up and making catches. And that and that's credit to Devin Leary for finding those open guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I mean, again, it, it's it, it's one thing like when, uh, uh, you know, when basically the entire game, I, I was watching the game with my parents and, and my wife, and and they all kept on saying like, "Where's Emeka? Where's Carter?" Yeah, I know. And all these guys like, you know, isn't that bad? And it's like, well, no. I mean, again, it, it's great that again, obviously, you know, and it, and it could have been, and obviously, we'd have to watch like you know, like the coaches came back, but it could have been that they were keying in on Emeka and 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 Carter, which I mean, I get it. And so you had to rely on some of the other guys like 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 Penix, like CJ Riley, right. like right. Uh, Chris Doodle. Like so and again, and, and Porter Rooks, I mean, that guy is a baller. That yeah. guy's gonna be a, a great player for us. Yeah, he's still uh technically his freshman because yeah. of the extra year of eligibility. Co- COVID freshman, I guess, is the yeah, term yeah. they're using these yeah, days. Yeah, they <laughs> almost knocked my whole computer off. Yeah, they used that a couple <laughs> times on the broadcast last night. Yeah. COVID freshman. <laughs> yep, yep. So, uh, so yeah, no, I mean, he's been super impressive and, and like CJ Riley, you know, for him to have that bomb of a catch for a touchdown. I mean, yeah. that again, that, and we, we talked about it during the preseason when we were talking about the team coming up or whatever. And, you know, so for him to, um, you know, go off, uh, you know, it was, was, you know, that was, that was expected. And, and, and again, yeah. I, I think that we are going to see more of that because really, again, at the, the Wake Forest game, it's all hands on deck. It is. You're not leaving any plays unused. You're not leaving any players on, off, you know, on the bench. It is all hands on deck. No matter what it takes, we're gonna we gotta win this game. Period. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I like I know you say that, but like Wake Four. I think if we, I mean, we can score on Wake Forest with a regular offense. I totally yeah. believe that. I mean, their their defense, especially yesterday. Right, not. I mean, has not been obviously has not been their strong suit. So, I mean, I really don't think we have to get like throw the whole playbook at them, you know. Um, no. But yeah, it's definitely good to see that we have those options if if we do need it. Yeah, yeah, no, and and again, it, it's uh, uh, you know, because like one thing I was thinking about as well, and and uh, you know, first of all, I mean, we got to talk a little bit again though about how how Dev how impressive Devin Leary was. You know, he had. Uh, he is the I think only the second time in NCAA history where we've had uh, a co- consecutive two consecutive games with over 300 passing yards and four touchdowns. And the only other guy to do that was Russell Wilson, who's doing yep. pretty well right now in, in the NFL. Last time I checked, um, so again, just has been super impressive this year. And yeah, I mean, everybody's going to talk about the interception, which you know, yeah, it ruined his streak or whatever. But and and I mean, my thought on that, and again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too, Michael. But uh, um. You know, so so what were your kind of thoughts on, on that interception? Like, you know, that that play call at the end. I mean, for me, really, you know, everybody's like, you know, why would you do that? Like, you know, why would you risk the the, the streak? But it's like, I mean, you got to leave all the cards yeah, on the table. You, it, you can't you can't let a streak be a part of your decision making, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's a good streak to have. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter <laughs> if we had scored a touchdown there. That would have been huge. So. Right. Well, at the end of the day, the key is key is it really comes down to basically, are you taking care of the ball? Which there's no yeah. doubt, even after the interception yesterday, he's exactly. still taking care of the ball. So, that, but that Macon is like half an interception. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. So Macon, glad you, glad you got to join us, man. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So, so I, you know, obviously breaking down this Florida State game, obviously you talked a little bit about, you know, how crazy it was at Emeka and, uh, you know, Thayer and, and Carter combined for three catches. Um, you know, Leary looked impressive yesterday. And then Trenton Gill right. was the man, the myth, the legend yesterday as well. So, so what were your kind of overall thoughts? Anything to add initially? From what you guys said, I mean, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, I think the fact that you highlight Trent and Gill is pretty nice because that guy. Mm-hmm. I was thinking this today: is 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 he or AJ Cole better? And I mean, or, or Will Bauman too. I mean, Bauman, Bauman I mean, was, they've, got, they've had some great punters, and yeah, I know yeah. like Johnny Evans is probably one, probably arguably the greatest punter we've had because he's got the the accolade to go with it. But yeah, I mean, and we're talking about punters now, but like, we take <laughs> that for granted. And it's like yeah. I mean, he's like putting them exactly where they have to go for the most part. And it's, I don't know, it just puts a lot of pressure on the offense to drive all the way down the field. And when you have a defense as good as yours, it's, it's, it's makes it that much tougher. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, uh, I thought this team, what I thought That's was really, what I, interesting, what I thought about, really interesting about this game was that state didn't have to do anything crazy to win. No. Yeah. And they did it. And when you look at the at the uh, who was who uh, was the who scored the points, it wasn't there. It wasn't mm-hmm. Emeka, and it wasn't Devin. Like yeah. Carter, Emezi, nor Thomas, and, like, and they- Bam, and and Bam. I mean, he overall had a good game, but I mean, Ricky Person though seemed seemed to be the one that you know was getting the highlight stuff. You know, for sure. I mean, obviously highlighted by that amazing play to score that touchdown to kind of ice the game. All right. So. I mean, uh, my, my whole thing is it's just like he, you don't, the, the fact that we have the weapons we do, like Toodle, again, people forget, like we were like, I don't forget, but just, they don't, they don't, I seem to forget how we were going into like, man, tight ends like a question mark. Like, we don't really know mm-hmm. what we're going to do with that. And, yeah. I mean, Toodle has taken, has gone past par, Parham at this point, Parham. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, Toodle's a, a dude. <laughs> He's a dude, yep. and he and and then you got to think about the way they've integrated Penix into this offense. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that you, your three leading receivers, I think, what was it? They had like three receptions the whole game. If that, I think it was. I don't think yeah. Carter had a single catch. Mecca had two, and, and they had one, which was yeah. a screen, which was a screenplay. Right. I'm looking yeah. at the looking at it now. Your leading receiver was Trent Penix. He had three receptions for 97 yards. His average was 32.3. And uh, obviously, the long, the long, the one reception he had for the touchdown was forty-five yards. But I mean, mm-hmm. I mean it's just two other receptions were like twenty-five or, or so a piece. And then mm-hmm. right. CJ Riley, three receptions for seventy-seven yards. Again, the long was a sixty-two, but as a touchdown. And then mm-hmm. Ricky, and then I mean, Toodle Rooks. Rooks had a, a really solid game, made some critical plays. I just mm-hmm. think we didn't have to. We didn't have to just blow open the playbook at all. No, I mean, yeah. you just like I thought it was relatively vanilla for the most part. I mean, mm-hmm. that even like you think about the pass to the R- Ricky's pass touchdown that he had that went for like forty yards. You think about the forty-five yarder to um, Trent. That was like a little simple screenplay. He just took to the house, mm-hmm. and then um, what I mean, uh, Matuidi's pass was just. I mean, we were already in the red zone, but that was a right up the middle pass. That I mean. It was a very athletic catch that he had to, that, that Toodle had to make, but I just think it really impressed me that we like you can take away our top three receivers, and we have a whole nother set of receivers that we can yeah. get the ball to. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, it, it's, it is a credit to back that we can do that. But then you know, I'll let you finish your your, your take on the offense. Then, Layton, sorry, that's just my thoughts. I was impressed by that. Yeah, well, because I mean, one one question that that still kind of is a big wonder to me is where's Jordan Houston? You know, I mean, you yeah. know, not necessarily. I mean, just I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's again, it's a good thing that we haven't heard that he's transferred yet. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, not that I want him to. I, I'm just saying that it, it it surprises me that you see a guy like Trent Penix who's really gone off these last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. and you're like, huh, like you know, man, like where is Jordan Houston? Because I mean, Jordan Houston 
could be a part of this. Now, I think that Penix is a little bit bigger, a little bit, you know, beefier that, you know, he can, he can be, but he's fast, you know, so uh, he can kind of be kind of a dual threat, kind of a blocker, but also to a, a great pass catcher and a great runner as well. Again, yeah. like a Swiss army knife, like, like, like JCM, like they were talking about at the beginning of the season. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely was pondering, but again, the biggest thing, which I love is again, it really does set up so nicely that Emeka was quiet this week. But you know that you know they always say don't sleep don't don't wake up a sleeping giant. Well, you know that he's going to wake up at Wake Forest. I just <laughs> you know it. I mean, just go ahead and like I don't know if you can bet player props, but whatever player prop there is for Mecca, he is. I I'm just I'm just smashing the overs. I just totally see a breakout or just a a huge game from Mecca coming up here against Winston Salem. So, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, talking a little bit more about this and the biggest thing which which I want to say. There's, well, there's two things I want to say. First of all, which is kind of a big one. So the biggest thing which I love about this team is the ability to take punches in the mouth, but fight right back. You know, the, the you know, like I think it was in the what, like the the last Rocky movie where you know you know Rocky made the you know quote saying you know life is about hard. You can get hit and keep moving forward. And I, mean, I truly think that was what it was yesterday. I mean, Florida State just went on just a, a breeze and just was playing some absolute great great football. I mean. Then they, I mean, they were just making plays and and like you know that first touchdown and, where you know just like a prayer of a lob to just the back corner of the end zone. I mean, you know that was just you know a little bit of luck, a little bit of you know hey great play and and, and but again at the end of the day, you know we fought right through it, you know, and, and we found a way to win, you know. And at the end of the day, that's the key thing is in day even if you're not playing your best ball, can you find a way to win? Which this team has done over and over again. So again, I just don't understand, you know, the people that are still just doubting this team or hating on this team. Because then, day you see the progress of this team, of this program, you see the progression. You know, you can't ignore it. Again, I get it. At the end of the day, it's you know, we we didn't look, you know, amazing or spectacular, but you know, teams teams have their off. I mean, look at Alabama. You know, yesterday, you know, they barely beat LSU. They looked like crap, but they found a way to win. You know, they they. But see, to me, I I I thought it was impressive that we didn't really even have to try. Yeah, well, again, like, we, we didn't have to do anything crazy, but, we, it's about, hey, we, you know, just, just stuck with the plan and 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 pulled out the win. Did what we had to. So, and then and yeah. then the other thing which I wanted to mention as well, and this is kind of pain as well, but, um, you know, so the biggest, it, you know, one of the biggest issues I have or kind of one of the biggest pains I have is when, you know, fans take a look at this game and go, oh, well, if we can't do this here, then we're not going to, you know, do well against Wake Forest. Or, you know, oh, you know, Wake Forest is going to totally take advantage of us here at this place. When then they, it's a different game plan. It's a different stadium, different environment, different yeah. set of personnel. I mean, you know, we lost Tyler Baker Williams. We lost him early in the game. And, you know, it sounded like from what Dorn was saying that Tyler Baker Williams would be back and hopefully Savion would be back. But again, it's just, it's just, you know, a, a frustration to me that. Wake Forest, it's going to be completely different. You know, it, 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 it's, it's you know, you, you can't necessarily look at it like that. So, but anyway, I know that's kind of a little bit of a side thing, but just wanted to we'll bring that up. So, <laughs> so, um, so, but, but what would you guys kind of say overall in terms of, uh, you know, your thoughts on maybe, maybe more of the way Florida State played, um, you know, and maybe more on the defensive side, you know, I thought, you know, for the most part, Engel looked solid. Um, you know, I think that, I kind of have a lot of expectations out of him just because, you know, he's been one of our key guys for yeah. a while. He has a lot of experience. So I would like to see him make more plays. But then, they, I mean, he led our team in tackles, you know, had 13 total tackles, eight solo um, tackles. So, I mean, good game overall. But, you know, just, uh, um, you know, again, solid outing. And I think for the most part, except for really two drives, kept the Florida State offense at bay, really. Yeah. That was kind of my thought. Yeah, I mean, I think – that I mean, credit to Florida State. They came out that um, onside kick at the second half. That was huge, and I think our got our defense on our our heels a little bit. And obviously, they they scored a touchdown, which I don't know. Ball kind of looked like it hit the ground, but yeah, um, um, yeah. I mean, other than, other than that, like I think that was just kind of that was I, that was a good call by them. It it got us off. It that gave them a lot of momentum. I cut the lead yeah. in half, yeah. um, and. You know, I think Mackenzie Milton he 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 made he made some pretty good throws, but he also made over a lot of overthrows and Mm -hmm. and they had a lot of drop balls too. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he looked he looked uncomfortable. He looked uncomfortable for most of the game. 
Yeah. I mean, high, but well, to me, Florida State's all about running the ball for the most part this season, and I, they just, I think they just, they just weren't. I mean, they had their backup quarterback in. They had some of those guys may have had the flu or coming out of the flu. So, yeah, um, I, I just think they were just had a tough week for them to prepare. Um, but I, I think that the the one thing that I'm I'm more getting more and more impressed with is the depth of our defense. I mean, for sure. You didn't have, I think we'll say that Jakeen Harris played. I, I know he didn't record any sort of stat line. Um, you didn't see uh, Jalen Scott on the field. Um, Savion Jackson then got injured at one point, had to leave the game. Tyler Baker Williams didn't play. That's on top of not having um, uh, Clark um, yeah. or having. Wilson or Moore <laughs> or Fagan. Four I mean, guys, yeah. you've got like you've got like nine to ten guys who who were even starters last, you know, mm-hmm. the beginning of the season are not playing, and you're still like at, at halftime. The rush, of course, had a negative one rushing yards. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's really getting it done. And you keep saying that we don't need to, just, we can't keep having these injuries, but somehow this team is just keeps going, and it's. Yeah. Um, that's what impressed me the most. Uh, I think, I think the move to putting Drake Thomas at middle linebacker has been really big um, mm-hmm. for, for the rest of the season moving forward. Um, yes. But you know, I, I'll tell you a guy I was I was kind of I thought should have had a second pick. I was like, to see, is Pierre Lewis as a backup yeah. to um, Baker Williams? He ain't bad, man. He is a good player. He he should have had a. He almost had a second. He should have had two. Yeah, he should have had two. Should have. But again, I mean, it, it, it's it's super impressive. Again, just how these guys can rally around, you know, everybody. You know, even the injured players. You know, for sure. Now, you know, one thing which uh, I thought was interesting for sure was, uh, um, uh, you know, was was obviously Corey Durden and Cyrus Fake, and those were two guys that we talked about because they were transfers from Florida State last year um, and played him. You know. Durden overall had a good game for sure. I think he he's the one that laid the big hit on mm-hmm. McKenzie Millen that forced that interception, which was great. Um, so, uh, but you know, again, for the most part, he was just kind of a little bit quiet about the whole thing. Which I mean, again, huge respect to him on that because at the end of the day, you know, I, I think that him leaving Florida State wasn't like a oh I can't stand FSU I'm out of here. I just think honestly, he felt like that he had a better chance of competing for an AC title than also to you know, maybe kind of make it more of a name for himself if he moved to NC State rather than staying at Florida State, which, you know, mm-hmm. I get for sure, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, especially seeing that we lost to Lee McNeil, I think that he could, he kind of saw himself jump right in and filling in that hole, which I think for the most part this year, he's done a great job of for sure. I mean, he's he's been, you know, everything and then some of what we hoped and expected that the hole of a Lee McNeil would be filled with. So, um, yeah, go ahead, Michael. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say one more thing about M- making brought up the, um, you know, the depth of the defense, and if you think back to the 2019 season where we went three and nine, and we had what it, at, we had so many injuries that year, it got a lot of young guys um, experience, and I think we kind of see that paying off this year. Mm-hmm. So one thing which I wanted to kind of uh, discuss was uh, from Russell. Actually, he actually brought it up here, but um, yeah. so Megan, I'll let you uh, answer it first, and then Michael, let you kind of give your thoughts on as well. But so what were your kind of thoughts on Doran's uh, post game press conference comments about, you know, keep on disrespecting us, you know, that's okay. Keep doing it. Like, you know, what are your kind of, yeah, I'll tell you one thing that really bugged me was I know, I know people, I don't know people with different pains about Adam gold and Joe Obvious. Joe Obvious had a comment on Twitter where he was like, are people really disrespecting NC state when they're like number 19 in the college football playoff rankings? And I, I mean, I would say to a degree, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I at least because to me, it's still the people around that still have this air that the NC State's going to drop the ball. They're just going to mm-hmm. they're just going to well, and yeah. you know what? We we could lose. It would be very NC State to beat Wake Forest <laughs> and then lose to Syracuse. <laughs> I mean, it, it it could happen. Um, I, just, I, yeah, I don't see I, it, but my thing is at this point, it's like uh, state is state. I think it's just simply a good team this year. And people just kind of like, yeah, but, or yeah, but this the state, this, or yeah, but that. And it's like, like, look, Dory made a good point. He said, I get Clemson and Florida State are having down years. Well, 
when was the last time we beat Florida State and Clemson in the same, in the same year? year. Which was 2002. So 20 years yeah. ago. 20, yeah, 20 years ago. So it's a statement of the program. And when when, when the team keeps getting losing injuries, and this should be the biggest thing. When they keep losing injuries and they keep winning and they keep getting the same stats. Like if you look at like particular again, high in the defense. In conference play, what were the how what we've held these teams to? It's like um, I'm gonna go back and look because it's if you look at the the uh, schedule here, we got we conference play. Boston College, we held them to seven points. Uh, Clemson, we held them to 21. Um, mm-hmm. Louisville held them to 13. Now Miami, we had we had we let 30 because Van Dyke is I think a legit quarterback. Florida State, 14. Florida State, 14. So I mean, the, they're doing pretty daggum good. And these teams are then going on the road and playing other teams and scoring more points. And it's not like, and it's not like anything's changed. I mean, I get the, the, you know, different situation dynamics within a game. I get that. But to me, the team is, is deep and it's just a sign of great coaching and just good ball players. I, I, I think the team is being, dis, is, uh, is slightly getting disrespected, but I don't want that to be a statement of um, – I don't want that to be a statement of, oh, well, I'm going to say keep disrespecting us as like a shot at the media to ultimately start ranking us higher. Like, mm-hmm. to me, it's like – I think Doran, if the kind of person he is, you get the sense that he's like, no, nah, we like it. Keep doing it. Yeah, like, we do. Yeah. Like, literally – Yeah, it's that's okay. So that's what I think. You can, keep, you, you can keep getting, like, smart with us and, like, talking like giving the doubts out there like yes his state's doing great but they have this or yeah they have, but they've got a really tough schedule ahead of them or yeah but their running game is really st- maybe we're just good like we're still winning and with those things yeah. like schedule's tough we're still winning we're running games not been, not been great although i would say i think uh, zonovan knight had his best rushing game with, in conference play um mm-hmm. he had 75 yeah. yards i think um they're still winning. I'm tell you what, and Devin Leary, dude, that guy, that guy can play. That guy, I mean, like it's another another game, four touchdowns, three hundred plus yards, and again, mm-hmm. he didn't throw but three receptions to uh, your top living receivers. It basically was C.J. Riley, Trent Penix, Chris Tootle, and Porter Rooks, mm-hmm. and yeah. Ricky Person in the receiving game a little bit. I mean, yeah. I think I asked my I asked my dad about this. I said, um. In the offseason, what do you do in the offseason? Because usually you think about what changes do you make. I'm not changing anything, I don't think. You mean heading into this offseason? Yeah. I, you, know, you know, even if we were to – even if we stumbled a game or so, or maybe two, do you really change anything in the offseason as well as this season has gone to this point? Unless it's an abysmal fall off for some yeah. reason. But I don't see that happening. Hopefully not. I mean, no, I, I mean, so. I, I, you know, my dad thought maybe – Maybe the O line, maybe the running game guy, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I just think you're, the team is both coordinators and the head coach are getting it done. The hires of um, Brian Mitchell at cornerback and DeForest at safeties have been really great. Uh, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, I don't know. I I just think it's a good team. So I, I love hearing Dave Doran say that. Yeah. I personally do. Michael, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I. Don't... It's hard to say. I don't think it's in respect to like the rankings were 19th in the college football playoff and we'll probably move up uh, two or two or three spots or 21st in the AP poll that came out today. I think I think it's more kind of not disrespect in the rankings. I think it's more a lot of people picked us to lose against Boston College. A lot of mm-hmm. people picked us to lose against Louisville. Um, you know, even even is this, this isn't really a big thing but even if you look at the 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 lines before games we were only a three-point favorite again at boston college we won by 26 we were mm-hmm. um a seven-point yeah. favorite against louisville we won by two scores we were only a three-point favorite against florida state one by two scores mm-hmm. we were um, 10 point underdog to clemson one by one by a touchdown, yeah so yeah so uh, you know i can and, and another thing we we were talking about a little bit last night um the Wake Forest NC State game is is on ACC Network next week next weekend when Miami, Florida State, and Virginia, Notre Dame are both on national TV. 
when when those games. I yeah. mean, Virginia and Notre Dame kind of – Virginia still has a chance to win the Coastal. But Nate, I mean, money. Miami, Florida State, yeah. yeah. I know. It's because they're national names. But money. Miami, yeah. Florida State game literally means nothing in the in the. Why do you ACC why do you think why do you think the Coswell playoff is struggling putting Cincinnati <laughs> in the top four? Yeah. Because they're a group of five yeah. teams. And it's like, well, they're not they're not Ohio State. So really mm-hmm. you're they're telling on themselves. They're like, you don't really care about who's the best team. Yeah. Ohio State, they've got the best receiving core. They're great. Would they would they beat Cincinnati? You know, they had 10 games. Would they beat them six, seven times out of ten, maybe, maybe this year, maybe. I don't know, yeah. but I know Cincinnati is daggum good, and you and like you guys leaving them out at times is like pretty telling on yourselves. Yep. Yeah. I mean, now, I think your point, you're made, Michael, is great. Like that's a great point. We are the AC network for a team in Atlantic Division <laughs> that could basically the winner of this game is essentially a pseudo Atlantic Division champ, yeah. barring you know just choking the rest of the season, and you and, have us not on a prime time slot. And more yeah. likely, both teams will be top fifteen. Yeah, it's still going to be a top fifteen matchup. Have, they, have the playoff rankings come out yet? To, no, uh, like Tuesday, Tuesday nights. Tuesday night, yeah. but but again, I mean, more and, likely from who lost, but we'll see. Yeah, you know and I mean? um, like I'm, and, and the I'm, fact I'm, that I'm it's, looking at Kirk Herbstreit's right now, right now, I'm looking at right now. He said his his uh, top six for the playoffs: Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma. Cincinnati is nowhere to be found. He has Michigan up there. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, again, it's, point. Like, they don't they don't really believe in Cincinnati and they don't people don't I think really believe in the state because it's not Clemson or it's not exactly whoever. Carolina. Like again, Carolina gets the biggest benefit out of most teams I've ever heard of. It's like dude, they were still talking about Sam Howell for Heisman in the game. I mean I mean he's having a good season, but you can't he's be not barely five hundred. Yeah, you can't be barely five hundred and be no. in the Heisman. Now, one thing, though, which Pastor Pack brought up, which I thought was an interesting question. So would you say that Doran, if like, you know, based on what Doran's done so far, would you say that he's proven that haters wrong? Or would you say that he is in a great position to prove them wrong? I I would say he's in a position to prove them wrong. I agree. Because, yeah, you've been Clemson. Yeah, you've been Florida State. Yeah, you've been Boston College. You've beaten. Some of other teams, um, but they are you. You, um, what have you really proven to this point? Right, that you're a good team, but yep. are you going to really stake your claim into it now? Yes, yes, no, I agree. agree. Well, I would agree sp- with that. What, well, and, and especially too with how again with Wake Forest, you know, looking at you know how they played against Carolina again, just <sighs> offensively. They have everything, you know. I mean, they have a, a, a solid run game. They have a great quarterback with two great receivers who are long, who are fast, who can make plays, and they have a great coach. Uh, but again, defensively, again, they, they got a lot of holes. That's what I'm saying. Is is I mean, yeah. it's it's going to be a high scoring game for sure. But uh, um, so again, I mean, that that's why I'm saying that. Yeah, at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta finish. You know, you gotta finish what you started, and that kind of leads into Pastor Pack's next question, which I thought was a good question. So is basically. Where would you kind of rank us in the ACC today? Like, would you say we're the best team in the ACC right now? Would you say we're second? And I kind of want to take the first crack on this, if y'all don't mind. But uh, so I would say right now that combined, when you kind of look at the whole season so far in terms of not to say like just what based on the game yesterday's that happened in the ACC, but overall that from what you see on offense with Devin Leary, who can who offensively we take care of the ball, we score mm-hmm. points. We limit the the points on on the defensive side, even with so many guys out. That again, I just think that on the defense side and the offensive side combined, that that we are the best team in the ACC combined right now, just because of what you see on the defense and what you see on the offense right now. But now again, uh, it, it, at the end of the day, it, it's uh, you know like Pitt. You know, Kenny Pickett is. I mean, he's playing great ball right now, but. Um, again, it's just a question of them defensively. Because, again, I think that with every team right now, you have a question either on the offensive side or you have a question on the defensive side. When I think with us, you don't really have that question. You know, like I think you have a solid offense and a solid defense, which is I don't I, I don't think anything is, is something that any team in the ACC really right now can say right now, you know, that you feel mm-hmm. confident about that you have a good defense and a good offense, you know. That's my thought. But so – yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I think it's, I mean, 
you had to have Wake up there just because they were undefeated up to this point. But right, you know, I I don't think that yeah, I don't think their defense can stop anybody. <laughs> um, I think it's between us or Pitt. Like yeah. you said, I mean, Pitt's Pitt. It's gonna be a great to, game mm, if if that yeah. happens. It'll be a great game. I'm sorry, I just want to add that. I'm sorry. No, I mean, I mean that's I. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I think it's probably we're pretty close. I mean, Pitt's defense, they they've been pretty good. Um, you know, uh, they had a little scare against Duke, but pulled it together in the second half. <laughs> yeah, um, they did. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Megan. Yeah, I would say to be honest, I do think, I, I do think um, potentially, I think Pitt's probably the best team right now. And if I, I, I don't think it's a wide try. I think it's close. I do think Pitt's a better team. I think they've played um, at times. I don't know who I'm trying to look at who they who they actually have played. And they've played Clemson. I mean, and they've played that they played Virginia. Play Virginia yet? No, no, that'll be that's that'll basically be a, a coastal division. Yeah, I think that's well, but, but but one thing to keep in mind. And Crossside just mentioned it is is if 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 I mean, yeah. and I'm I'm curious on this is I mean, so if Miami Miami wins out, they win the coastal. Is that the yeah, situation think- right now? I think, well, I think that's so what it is. Team, every team, if you, whoever wins out on each division, is going to get it. Yeah, so, but well, Miami is so. still there. They're they're not out of the picture. Is what the point? They is. only have yeah. They only have two ACC losses. Mm-hmm. I think they they they'll have the tiebreaker over Pitt because they beat them, and I think they still have to play Virginia as well. If I'm not wrong. Wow. Yeah, I if I I think the ACC needs to have an NC State versus Pitt championship game. I think this is your two best teams. Now I will yeah. say. I do think Miami's starting to play pretty well right now. Miami's playing pretty well in the Coastal Division. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I Wake Forest to me, I, I know nobody has believed in them for the most part because they, they haven't played really anybody. And the first time they kind of play somebody, they lost. Yep. They had to score. They scored 55 points and lost. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> their, their defense is just it's atrocious. So, I'm going to be very interested to see how, how, to me, the defense that we have, I feel like we could score pretty well against Wake Forest's defense. I, I just, I'm not, not yeah. saying that like knock on wood. I'm saying like, I just think when you look at, I think we can. I don't know mm-hmm. if we're going to, um, but I think we can. I think, it, I think I mean, we're averaging like 30 points a game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, could we score more against a? I don't know where Wake Forest ranks on a on a defense overall. I'm going to go try to see if I can find it. Um, mm-hmm. Wake Forest is um, probably not very high. Well, I mean, well, they've g- well, given up 56 well, points 12, twice already. They're allowing 32 point. They're allowing 33 yeah. points per game. Um, yeah. So I mean, I think I think it'd be I think Pitt's a little bit better than us to a degree, um, and I think that is be more so because of where. Pickett is, yeah, relative to where Leary is, um, and that's the only real reason. I think Addison's really good. I think Pitt's defense is solid. Um, I don't know what their rushing games. I can't remember what the rushing games like, but um, that's what I think. I think I think it's Pitt and State. I think yeah. Wake Forest is probably they're right there. Put it this way: if, I, if Miami was playing Wake Forest right now, I think it'd be a very interesting game. I think so. I, I think Miami, Miami looks good. I think Miami could beat him. And I, I think agree. it's I and I think it's I just don't know how like Pitt, I mean Wake Forest is not going to have score. I don't think they're going to score 55 points every single game. No. They're going to, they're going to regress at some point. Now, could that be against Carolina? Could that be it? But I mean they score 55 points. If they if Pitt scores like 30 points a game, I, I I don't know. I mean, they they allow a lot of points, man. They do, they do. And and, and the one thing too, uh, I uh, I wanted to point out Chris Saul's question of over under on on his nine win prediction. And I mean, you know, obviously it's it's you know it's it's that's not really much of a too much of an interesting conversation because there's only three games left in the regular season, you know. So I mean, I you know let's let's put it this way, and we'll, maybe maybe we'll save it to the end in terms of our predictions here for the Lake Forest game. But I think that really kind of determines. You know where you know if we get nine wins, ten wins, you know uh, for the regular season. But um, one thing which I did want to mention is obviously with Wake Forest, they have two star receivers and At Perry, 
and Corey Robertson, uh, you know, that have been studs this season. Obviously, with the Carolina game, A.T. Perry had 129 yards, six catches, two touchdowns, and Corey Robertson had seven catches, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. So uh, was are they're definitely their two most productive uh, wide receivers for sure. And again, obviously, the, the key with the Wake Forest of offense, I feel like you've got to mention the the delayed, uh, you know, the delayed handoffs. You know, those yeah. things, those things are, <laughs> are, are 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 scary, and they're, and they're tough to deal with because I mean, basically, for for those you know, kind of don't really know from the how it kind of affects on the defensive side. But basically when you have that delayed handoff where basically the quarterback and the, the running back basically are holding the ball together, it basically freezes the safeties because the safeties don't know yet. Is this a run mm-hmm. or is it a pass? We don't know. So you kind of have to kind of wait a little bit. And that, then that basically gives the wide receivers time to make, you know, to, to, to start their routes. And so it's a, uh, it's an interesting offense, you know, not really the most exciting one, but I mean, obviously explosive. I mean, you know, Sam Hartman had 400 yards passing and, you know, had 78 yards rushing. So, uh, between um, him and, um, what's the guy, the quarterback for UVA? What's the guy's name? Armstrong. Armstrong. I mean, yeah, Armstrong. Hartman and Armstrong for who's going to have with the most passing yards. I mean, I know like Armstrong's long gone, but Hartman, that they just, he can just, he just throws the ball all over the yard. <laughs> yeah he is he is yeah and and, and so you know i mean i it, it's going to be an interesting one now the one thing again which i think is going to be in our favor is first of all that it's it's a home game for wake forest but i truly do believe that nc state is absolutely going to show out i mean and first of all i mean obviously for all those who are tuning in or listening again make sure that again if, if you can you got to show up for this game got to support yeah. these guys highlight that to highlight what you're saying layton where does this game line up in Dave Doran's tenure? Potentially, yeah. Are they, like to put that in perspective for fans, like where do you think this game lines up in his all of his games he's played? If he wins, if he wins, I'd say it's the top. Is it the top? I mean, to me, it's either that or it's a, I think the situation situationally, it's either this game or what we could have had when we had beaten Clemson a few years ago. I feel like. It's in that ballpark because imagine us beating Clemson back then. They would have not won the national championship. It would have been us beating Clemson on the road. They would have, I, I think that, but this is like us going for a championship. So I feel like there's a little bit of a debate. Me personally, I think that, but mm-hmm. um, maybe I'm wrong. But to me, the whole point is it's arguably the biggest game he'll play. He, and we, yeah. like fans, we got to be there to support yeah, it. Yeah. I, yeah. I think we talked about it. Um, earlier about where does the after we beat Clemson like where does that win rank and it's like well once we beat Clemson it's almost like each next game is the biggest game because we did beat Clemson and you know I I think this will be this will definitely be up there well and the the reason why I would say this one is maybe a little bit higher than even the Clemson game in 2018 which was a big one for sure is that game with Clemson it was pretty much known going into that game that state was underdog, that it was going to be an uphill battle to beat Clemson. Uh, you know, because Clemson at that point was playing great ball and, uh, you know, they were a great team, a solid team all the way around. Now, Wake Forest, you look at that and it's a 50 50 game. You know, either team can come out with a win. It, it's really going to be a toss up. So that's why, really, for me, I look at this one as big because, as bigger, because, well, first of all, you know, we lost that game against Clemson and, but, you know, but also too that, Again, you know, we haven't won an AC title in football since 1979. Yeah. And basically, if we win, that puts you pretty much in the driver's seat. Because, I mean, yeah. I mean, Wake Forest still has to play Clemson and, and Boston College. And I would – and I think that right now, FPI has actually uh, – Clemson has a 75% favorite to beat Wake Forest, which is interesting. Yeah. And then, I mean, Boston really? College – yep. And then, and then Boston College, I mean, you know, I think that – Phil Dracovic's only going to get better yeah, yeah. The, the more the more the more snaps he plays. So uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think this is huge. I mean, this I'm is big guy, for the fans out there too. Clemson is not out of it either. No, no six out of it. You can pull for them to beat Wake Forest, but that means they've now beaten Wake Forest. So then it would be like, a, okay, is it NC State or Clemson? Yeah. So you they would have the tiebreaker. So like, for over in that regard. So anyway, I'm just saying to make sure people fans. We, we think, oh, we've beaten Clemson. Like we're pat, we're going to go. Clemson's not out of it. No, just yeah. to see on that too. And, no, and, and 
which, which yeah. is why, which is why, which is why that yesterday we I was cheering for Louisville because again, if Louisville beat Clemson, it knocked him out. Agreed. So and and you know, there's people saying, well, you know, you know, it makes I don't know what exactly what they exactly actually believe. In. I don't even know necessarily what the what the there's so many tiebreakers. Yeah, there is. Yeah, but again, basically, if, if if Clemson got knocked out, if Clemson lost yesterday, it was Wake Forest versus us, and that's it. So yeah. But Michael, yeah, what were you going to say? They could lose. I they think, could lose. Sorry. I think Clemson. Yeah, I think they. I think they have to win out. I don't think. I think they yes. can't have more than two losses, which is what they have right now. Yes. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, which could very they could very well do it. And I mean, there's a world where Wake Forest could lose their last three games. <laughs> I mean, they could. They're going eight zero. They, they, they could, could not, end they the could season not. eight and four. Yeah. And or they could not, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, obviously, our game's going to be a tough one. They got to play at Clemson. Clemson's kind of they're winning close games, but they're winning. And then mm-hmm. at BC with uh, Dracovic back, that's not going to be easy either. So, yeah, yeah. Think, so, but I think it's uh, fun right now. You know, we're like, when was the last time we were having these kind of conversations? Like oh. we, we were in the one yeah. conversations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's probably, I mean, it's been a few years. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, literally, the conversations have been okay. You know, how good of a bowl game can we go to, and are we going to be Carolina? Right. That was pretty much the conversations. Right. Uh, so again, I mean, that's why I, I I say again. I mean, don't like think about necessarily what what is the last bad loss that you would say that we've had? The last bad loss, well, and, and I mean, first one first one that comes to mind for me is last year against Virginia Tech. Maybe you could say that one was a bad loss. I can't remember how they finished. I, I to me, I. I think it depends on how you look at it. Like you could say the Mississippi State game was, was a bad loss because we played terrible, but yeah. it was. But and I think it was they're because not a bad team. Mississippi State is now we know now in hindsight they're not a bad team. At yeah. the time, I don't think they were a really good team. No, but well they barely beat Louisiana Tech, but yeah, the week right. before. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I don't know. You might be the Virginia Tech game. I don't. Remember, I don't remember when the last. I have to go back and look. That's a good question. Yeah, no, it, 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 it would not be. Yeah, I wouldn't say either game this year has been bad, especially with the way Miami's played. In yeah, high, yeah. In no, hindsight, how, how, Miami, how Van Dyke yeah. has played? How Van Dyke has right. played? Pretty much, him. he's been unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he yeah. is he he is literally he like literally literally Manny Diaz was was laying like this going into NC State, and then and then literally Van Dyke just <laughs> reached into the ground and grabbed Van grabbed Van Diaz like by the or is it pulled him up. Yeah, is it the just, F where he's like laying the casket and he just flips it up? <laughs> like, I'm back. Yeah, but yeah. but it, but it's not many Diaz coming up. It's literally it's literally Van Dyke reaching in the ground and pulling him up. Yeah, That's really right. what it's been. And Same. I mean, because he can ride, he can ride Van Dyke and be like, "Look, this guy has only played." No, and Mike has saved three quarters it. of our I'm season. Right. Yeah, he has saved he has saved Van Diaz season. Which real quick, in career. I want to this real quick, and I know I don't want to stay in this too long. Do you think uh, we we'll go back to this? I think Fuente is done at Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to somebody about this. Do you think uh, Cutcliffe is done? Not saying fired, but do you think he's done? He's not going to leave on his own. I feel like Duke would have to let well, him go. I don't know, man. I, I think somebody because a new AD at Duke, and they're playing terrible. And it's like, I feel like someone's going to have a conversation with him, like, "Hey, like you've been here for a long time." He might retire. What do we think about potentially retiring? Kind of thing. They don't, yeah. No one's not going to fire him, but yeah, I know. I feel like it's got to be close to the end. Um, I know uh, it's a tough conversation then, for Duke. And then Dino Babers. Is he? Man, done? He's, he, no, no, I don't think so. No, I mean Sean Tucker's pretty good. He's young. They've had a good Traders season. Decent. Yeah, they've had a Are good season fourth, so far. ACC. All right. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. I'm just. Is Mike Norvell I, done? No, I, I I don't think so. Okay, I just want to ask. I want to get you guys engaged. I didn't know. I was, I'm thinking all this thing, these things in my head. Fuente is the only one that I'm like he's done. Fuente is done. Fuente was done when they lost to uh, not Georgia Tech, but who was it they lost to for BC at home? Yeah, they got well, then they lost Syracuse, and oh. then they lost Syracuse at home. I'm they lost Syracuse, Syracuse at home. Syracuse. It was Syracuse at home. It was the way they lost at home to Syracuse. I was like, he's done. Yeah. That's the one, but right. but 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Syracuse has done well. I mean, you know, beat a solid Liberty team. Uh, you know, they they um, you know lost a close one to Florida State. Right. Uh, you know, lost a close one to Wake Forest. Uh, lost a close one to Clemson. Beat Virginia Tech. Beat Boston College. And I mean, yeah. they got they got a good quarterback. So I mean, 
no, I don't see that. But but yeah, I mean, uh, um, but yeah, no, Fuente, I'm actually surprised he's still even the coach. I'm surprised they haven't let well, him go to start looking. But his his buyout drops by two and a half million in December, so they may be waiting for that. That might be it. That <laughs> that might be this it. Question. What about Satterfield? Because they didn't have a good year last year. Hmm, yeah. I don't think he's done. I think they give him another year. Yeah. yeah. I agree. But Satterfield's not done great except his first year, kind of like Fuente. Fuente mm-hmm. had his first great year at Virginia Tech and nothing really. Now, one thing which I think is interesting, which again, I don't really necessarily want to spend too much time on this either, is so AC Network actually mentioned yesterday, and it is 100% a possibility now, especially with how the season's turned out, but it is very much a possibility that possibility again i think a lot of this really depends on what happens this season but there is a possibility that isaiah moore peyton wilson and drake thomas can come back next season there's a possibility on that now the yep, one thing which again is. i will the one thing i will say is once again i've said this a hundred times and i think it I'll, it this depends on a lot of different players is how does this season finish if we win ac yeah. title you know i see a lot of guys leaving why because you go out yeah. on top you know we did what yeah. we came to accomplish so i'm going to walk away um, especially with somebody like Peyton Wilson, who there's, it's obvious that that guy just, he just cannot stay healthy. You know, the poor guy yeah. just cannot stay healthy. And so maybe he goes to the NFL draft and, you know, yeah, he might go like probably the fifth, sixth round right now, just cause he's has so many injuries, but maybe a team will say, I mean, if this guy could be healthy, he could be a steal for us and, <laughs> I, and, and get paid, you know, and same thing with more. I think if any, I think if any of the three of them do, it'll be Isaiah Moore because, like you said, I think Peyton Wilson just he he's just had too many injuries, um, and yeah. then Drake Thomas I think still probably needs another year to really, really show off as as kind of the the main a main linebacker on the team. Mm-hmm. I think if any of them do, it'll be Isaiah Moore. But like yep. you said, it could depend on how the season ends if they want to leave early or come back and compete for another championship or a potential mm-hmm. championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody asked, is Leary draft eligible this year? I don't he think he is. He is. He's he three is. years in. So he he's could go. He's, 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 he's not. He, he's four years in. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 his his first year was 2018. Injury. His first year was 2018. Yeah. He was he's back up He's not going to go. Yeah. He'll, he'll back. He's had a regular red shirt and an injury red shirt. So he's, yeah. Yep, he's technically been here for four years. So he is draft eligible. I mean, he's had a heck of a season. That's one thing is, again, I mean, I just – Again, I think it really does. I mean, if he, if if he wins AC title, and he's what thrown three interceptions, what twenty six touchdowns, I don't know how you could do much better than that. That's my thing, though. How can you do much better than that? Like he's. Had well, I think it's matter how teams view. I think it's matter how teams view him. Like, is he now, still? I don't know. Now, now, the one thing which I will say is, I mean, I think it's going to be a very quarterback-heavy class this year. I think there's going to be a lot of really good yeah. quarterbacks this season in the NFL draft. And um, I don't know what it's going to be next year either. Uh, it's just, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think Leary's going to leave. Um, so. I think there's still maybe Aries just game he can improve on, which I think he'll know more than any of us do. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, it is interesting. I don't want to get too ahead of the season, like we mentioned. Like, I don't want to talk about, I don't right. talk about coaches a little bit and all that, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. – it's just really well, interesting. It is. Well, yeah. it, it, it's a great conversation because that means that these players are really, really good and are playing really, really well. It's a great conversation to have. It's gonna be, <laughs> I will say this. If we were to win, you know, even before we say that, this team is playing one of the best seasons generally we've had in a while, long, long time. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very curious, like five years from now, eight years from now, we look back on this team and we see how many guys in the pros. I'm not saying that's like, Oh, everybody's a pro. I'm not saying that's gonna be interesting to me to see who actually ends up becoming pro. Like, are Ricky and Bam both on a roster somewhere? Or how many of the offensive line go pro? You know, Quan is gonna be a pro. Does Graham Gibson a pro? Is um, you know, is Dylan McMahon Zavala, gets healthy? McMahon or you know, are all three linebackers on it? You know, you just don't. I, I think it'd be very interesting. In hindsight, we're like, yeah, that team was really good, and we capitalized on guys who are now in the NFL all together in college. It's just gonna be really interesting. Yeah, and I mean, and honestly, I mean, kind of answer your question. I mean, I mean, I think Drake Thomas, Isaiah Moore, and Peyton, if they all can stay healthy, can be great NFL linebackers. I really do. Just because I mean, they're they they play with so much aggressiveness. You know, they play with with you know with no abandon for their well being. Like they play all out, and they are playmakers. They can catch the ball. They can 
bring the boom. They can they can do it all. So so I I definitely look forward. But again, kind of finishing up here about about Wake Forest here, and I know we kind of talked a little bit about it. Um, but I, I want to go ahead and and kind of put it in though. So um uh so so what was what let's go and do it. What what is your prediction, Michael? I'll put you on spot. Give me a score. Give me a winner. Let's do this. Um, I mean, I do, I do think we beat them. I mean, they haven't really faced a real defense all season. I think our offense will be able to put up enough points. I don't think it's going to be a shootout because I think our defense will hold them. But I think it it, it might be 30-27 state. Wow. wow. So Which, what, what is what is Wake Forest's average points you're scoring a game? Um, question. It's got to be 30. I think it's thir- it, It's high 30s. They've, they're the only FBS team to score 35 points in every single game. So it's got to be high 30s, if not 40. Yeah, let's look at yeah. it real quick. I'm just, I'm just curious. Because my thing is, like, are we – if you're saying they scored 27 points and yeah, – let me see it. Wake Forest is averaging 36 points a game. Yeah, yeah. They're averaging 36 points a game. Um, Pastor Pack says his prediction is pain. <laughs> yeah, negative way, like we're going to lose. Um, maybe, man. I know the curse of Wake Forest has been on us. Yeah. Uh, no, I know Layton's no curse. really – hold on. But I know Layton's really, really high on uh, Mezzi going off after uh, a couple years ago. Um, mm-hmm. 36 points a game to hunt, hold them under their average. Would that be the biggest statement through this defense? Can I ask you that question? If what yeah. you say, Michael, would you? Yeah. No. If they didn't hold them under their season average, this is going to be their best defense. No, we've been doing that all yet. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a team that no. scores that many points, I mean, I, I'm just curious. I just don't know. I'm just asking. No, I wouldn't say I, that would be like crazy. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean that's well that's well above the average we're giving up. We're only giving up 16 points a game. So that's fair. Mm-hmm. I I think State is the better, the most balanced team in the ACC. I think mm-hmm. they are getting it done on every area of the field. Um, the one I think if we can run the ball against them, and unless to me, I would like to ask you guys this question too. Like after I, I'm going to give my prediction though. Um, I think I think State's going to it's going to be something like thirty-eight thirty State. Yeah. Something like that I think it's going to be. I think State's yeah. going to have to score points to a degree. I do not think I don't buy into this narrative that state's gonna have to score like 40 plus points. Like you're gonna have no. to to play. No. State, no. I think, I think state's defense is like give Wake, let us have Wake Forest. Let, let's let's give yeah. it to him and show them what it's really like to play against defense. And I think it's gonna be like, you know, they have the dog bone thing. I'm not saying they have a lot of turnovers, but I think it's gonna be like a bunch of dogs on fresh meat. That's what I think it's gonna be like. And mm-hmm. it's um I, I think they're going to prove that they can do the real deal. And I, and I think I, we had this conversation. Does Wake Forest losing help yeah, state? I was going to ask state? that. <laughs> help state or hurt state? Are they going to go? I had talking to a friend of mine. He's like, man, yeah, but we're going to go on. We're going to have to play against a ticked off Wake Forest now. I'm like, what does that even mean? I don't, a ticked off Wake Forest? I don't think so. Like, I, I think they thought they were invincible with the destiny, with the Cinderella season, and they don't have mm-hmm. it anymore right now. Right. Or it's, no. it's a little tainted. And it's like, but well, we lost, we lost, and it's an in-state team. It was an in-state team, so mm-hmm. people they know, and it's like, mm-hmm. okay, we lost, and now we're going to play another NCC that's better. I, I maybe they take it as that we're playing against a ranked team. They tonight game at home for them. They get up. Yeah, I think one of the difference makers is going to be personally. I think it's going to be the fans. I think yeah. state is going to be packing out the place, and it's going to feel like a mini home game for state. I hope and so. I think it's gonna be the different. I, I personally, and again, to everybody who's listening to this, please be there. Like, please, like you don't like. Again, we had this conversation earlier. It's like one of the biggest games, if not the biggest game, in Dave Dorn's tenure for what it means for the program. So mm-hmm. if you can't be, there, I can't. I know Layton can't. He happens to be going to mess. My sister's getting married. Layton's gonna be there. So Michael, if you're not there, we hate your guts. But yeah, no, I think it's like a 38-30 state. Something that I've ballpark yeah right? yeah i think i think the way because i said last week i i said it last week i think i'd rather face them still undefeated but i think the way they lost that carolina game they put up 55 points were up 18 in the fourth quarter i think that was just kind of a demoralizing loss to them um so yeah what are your thoughts, i'm thinking what are your yeah 
So I will go ahead and give her a prediction because I've been thinking about it a lot while you guys were talking. So I'm going to say 35-31 NC State. I, 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 I still think, again, Wake Forest is a great offense. They're going to have their times. They are going to score points. You're not going – again, at the end of the day, unfortunately, you know, they're, they're bullish for sure. But, but I, I truly do think that – I mean, you look at this team – you look at everything they've been through specifically over the last three seasons, 2019, 2020, 2021. And I really do think it all comes down to this game. I, I truly do think that, that if we can beat Wake Forest, I think we're winning it all. I think it's, Oh dang, I kicked my, I kicked my stand. Um, I truly do think that this is kind of like just this, this is the make or break, you know, this is really just what it all comes down to. And I think that there's so many guys I can look at and go, this guy, is is going to like be ready for this game. I look at Emeka Mezzi. I look at Devin Carter even still kind of looking to make up a little bit for, you know, all the doubt, you know, people have from the Miami game. I look at guys like Savion Jackson, even Josh Harris, who when they came in as a recruit, they said, we are coming to win AC championship, you know, period. That is what right. we're coming to do. And, you know, you look at guys like Tanner Engel, I mean, who who's who's a monster. You look at the whole defense is playing for Peyton Wilson playing for Cyrus Fagan playing for CJ Clark. And, you know, again, so they, so because everybody's going to look at this game and go, oh, wait for it. Just like you guys kind of said, the kind of, you know, wait for is about to put 45, 50 on these guys. Like, you know, they're about to go, go off. And again, I think that State's going to be like, and I, I think that even the offense is like, guys, defense, just keep them at bay, you know, keep them to, you know, 20, 25 points. We're going to win this game. Period. I th- I truly do think that this is kind of what it is. I really do hope and, and expect that it is going to be a great week of practice. I think that's going to be great because you don't have to worry about like last week. You had to worry about getting ready for the chop and getting ready for you know craziness and worrying about this and who's playing and who's not playing. Um, but no, then they. I think it's you're, you're going to pres- pretty much consider it a neutral game. I think state fans are going to show out and be loud as heck for this team. I think you guys have a lot of guys that are ready. And, and ready to make a statement and have have the biggest game of 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 Doran's tenure and maybe one of the biggest games in state history. I'm telling you, I think this is really setting up to be a ginormous oh, sure. game for this team. So well, let me uh, ask, before we wrap up, real quick, I'll ask you this question, and it should be a yeah. pretty quick one. If you had to pick one position to play well, what would it be? Against Wake, uh, our defense that's a tough back. ones. I mean, that's pretty easy for me. So, wait, so yeah, they have to. And safeties, or which one yeah. did you pick? Both. I mean, you if you had one. to pick one, I guess, I guess the safeties, just because I f- specifically Tanner Ingle, I feel like he. I'm gonna pick on him. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like he has to. Yeah, because he mm-hmm. he had that he got ran by on that one play against Louisville. I think he there, there was a play. I remember he he missed, you know, he missed somebody a wide oh, wide open receiver against Florida State yesterday. I think he has to play well. We say Layton. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I would say that. I mean, I really kind of look at the front seven overall, and I think that we need to keep Sam in the pocket. We need to put some pressure on him. We need to get some hits on him. We need to get the momentum in our favor early. Because I don't know if you, I, I don't know this necessarily stat in front of me, but I know Wake Forest is famous for scoring first in pretty much every single game this season. And so I think the biggest key for this game: score first. I think we need to punch him in the mouth early, sure. score first. Yeah, and I think that because again, I think I think I truly do think that watching the game yesterday, Wake Forest is not comfortable playing from behind. I truly think comfortable with yeah. having to lead with 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 you know playing their game. But I think that when you kind of put the Wake Forest on their heels, you know it's they're like mm. so so I, I I truly do think that's the biggest key: score first, punch in the mouth, get the fans on our side, get NC State fans rocking, get them rolling, get some hits on Sam Hartman. That is key. Yeah. Get them a man. I, I, I go back and forth between is it the safeties or a defensive tackles in particular. Like mm-hmm. you mentioned how the RPO game for them. They like, they like hold the ball for like two or three seconds to like bite, to hold that safety long enough for the guy to go down. They want to lull you to sleep. And then mm-hmm. when you're not, when you're, you're, you've been dozed off long enough, they're going to take the deep shot. And yeah. me, it's, it's going to be Jakeen Harris and Tanner Engel, but I think particularly Tanner Engel. And then yeah. Durden. I, I think if they, we can get push against the centers or the guards while they're trying to hold the ball back right. there That's and disrupt point. that whole thing, mm-hmm. I think that'll be big. 
Yeah. Because yep. it, I don't know if any, I don't, and I have to go, I have to, I'm not, not going to go back and watch, but I'd be curious to know if another defensive line has been able to get great pressure on their offensive line to disrupt that. Because if right. you look, when I watch games, I've not watched a ton, but Sam Hartman has all day to do that back there. Yeah. So, yep. He's had good protection. Yeah. And maybe the O line for Wake Force is underrated, but I think the defensive tackles in particular, if they get pushed against that center deep offensive line for Wake Forest and get them that disrupt that whole exchange, make make that exchange have to go quicker, I right. think that'll be big. Well, and one thing, which again, Wake Forest has played Old Dominion, Norfolk State, Florida State, Virginia, Louisville, Syracuse, Army, Duke, and Carolina. Do you see one team on here that you go, man, they have a good defense? Well, one. when I say defensive line, I will say well, I do think Florida State's defensive line is really good. They didn't play great. Well, they have they have one stud. Icky, they they have a stud. Icky, Johnson. He gave up his first sack. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, That's he crazy. did. I know, but it's crazy. But again, and again, Florida State. You know, it's. it's yeah, I, yeah, I do agree with you. That was a good point. Specifically, yeah, specifically defensive yeah. line. Yeah, but, but so so again, I, I think that it, it's a. I think we're going to be able to score points. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we've, we've done well scoring points when we've needed to, besides the Mississippi State game, because I know Chris Hall has kind of asked a question about that. How do you think our offense is going to do matching what Wake Forest does on offense? And so uh, I think we kind of laid it out, you know, comes down to the fans, comes down to, you know, just being ready. You know, we need to have a great week of practice, you know, uh, you know, and just we need to do what we, we need to do what we've been doing. We need to play good yeah. ball. We need to find a way to win. You know, it's going to be a close game, but we just need to find a way to win. Yeah, so, I'm not, I'm not betting. Like, I'm not saying, oh, let's done deal. We're going to win. I think it's just a matter no. of – I think in hindsight, in the larger picture, I think fans just need to appreciate what has happened this season. Like, yeah, when was the last time you've had this many injuries and you're still playing great football? When was yeah. the, I mean, would you take – I mean, like, it, I'm not – and this is a hypothetical question. Was Devin Lear better than Ryan Finley? I would say <laughs> maybe. Really, yeah, I mean – you have that oh, so, yeah. I mean, like that stat they put up uh, where, where Devin Leary is uh, like the first quarterback since Russell Wilson to have yep. three, t- three games, 300, yeah, 300 mm-hmm. yards and three, three touchdowns at least. I mean, Pretty good. It, it's, this, is a, mm-hmm. this is a great team. Even if we were to not win against Wake Forest, and even, you know, even if we do finish like whatever, like eight and so four, nine, nine and three or whatever, it's nine and three. Nine three. It's it's a great it's a great team, and we just need to appreciate that. So, and I hope the team does not feel the pressure to win because I feel like that'll screw them up. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we've got to win this game, and if they get behind, I don't want them to be thinking like, oh no. Like, I want I just terrible. just just play controlled. Their whole mentality, the whole season has been one and zero. You see the the Twitter yeah. accounts all saying that, and I truly believe that's why this team is having the success they're having. In, in part because of the talent they have, but because they truly are going one to know. It's kept us winning. We're going to keep no, – mm-hmm. we're not changing a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares yep. who the next one is? We're going to beat them. Well, and, and the last point which I want to make is, you know, one thing that, that stood out to me when we lost to Miami was I think it was Grant Gibson was was uh, interviewed after the game, and he talked about how hard the all the players took that loss and how – multiple multiple players were crying and multiple multiple players were just i mean just absolutely just taking that loss hard and so i, I think that I, again i truly do think that that i think that that doran kind of said it best that you know we're we're we're, we're painting a, a a 12 i would argue 13 chapter story including the ac championship and it's, it's getting painted you know beautifully written beautifully and it's going to end with us holding you know the ac title and i, I truly and i think we said this that losing Mississippi State. I, I gave the jinx land. <laughs> what? What? No. But what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that that that's what all this is. It, it's and we kind of because we we, we, we said well because we said after You're saying Mississippi that's the State team's the, mentality. Well, well, yeah, that's the team's mentality because at the end of the day, you know, and we even said this on online even after losing Mississippi State and losing to Miami that hey, it could be that maybe that ended up being the best thing for us. Time we may have not have understood it at the time, but hey. You know, it, it, it it's obvious to me after the yeah. loss to Miami that, I mean, that it kind of humbled the team. You know, it kind of, right. you know, 
we're, we're, we don't want to feel this again. You know, this is, this is enough. Like, you know, we need to step up and we need to finish what, what we, what we want to do here. So yeah, I'm not saying by any means we're going to, but I'm just saying that that, I think that's the Matinia's mentality that then they go one and oh from here on out. And then at the end of it, we're going to be holding the trophy. That's, that's the mentality. So, but super excited. I'm, I'm actually sitting here like shaking, like, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, I'm, I'm actually like nervous. I just, like I can. Yeah. I know. I, I just don't hear. want us as fans to either be like, if you don't win this game, like getting then like everybody season's like, a seasons of failure. Or whatever. <laughs> like guys, it's a great right. team so far. Like they need to win and they, 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 they can handle business against Wake Forest. They can do it. Um, mm-hmm. Just appreciate what they're doing. Like, have a one and no mentality with the team. Like have that yeah. mentality. We're, we're going to win this game. We're not going to look forward to Syracuse or Carolina. I know. See you guys chatting on the side here about Carolina. Like, <laughs> like, we're, like we're not worried about who's the championship game. Let's just worry about getting this win. And then we, it'll take care of itself when we get there. Like you mentioned uh pastor pack, like it just, just win. And that'll sell everything else. Just win. Yep. So, well, thank you all so much again. I know we went a little bit over, but again, I mean, this is just such a big yeah. week and obviously such a big conversation for sure. And we do really appreciate everybody tuned in. Uh, Pastor Packing, Game 14 Alpha, Chris Sauls, uh, Cross Side Cobra, all you guys for tuning in. Uh, you know, definitely make sure to tune in with us next week as uh, it's, I mean, I, I can't even imagine like sitting here a week from now and, you know, like where we're going to be. Like, uh, like, it, yeah, I can't even wrap my mind around, so I'm not even thinking about it. But thank you all so much again for tuning in. Please make sure if you guys are tuning in, hit that subscribe button. This is free to do and really helps support us in the channel. And uh, and also to make sure to follow us at Tuffy Talk now if you aren't already. Um, and also to to like this video if you enjoyed it. Check out all of all of our other great NC State content. Uh, you know, we've been doing uh, previews of men's basketball and wrestling, and uh, we got a lot of, a lot more exciting uh, content here coming up. So thank you all so much for for tuning in. Please make sure again if you if if you can go to the game, Wake Forest, Winston Salem, yeah, seven thirty p.m. Be there, be there, Wolf Pack Nation. It, you guys, if you don't do it for anybody else, do it for me and Layton because we can't be there. We got we a wedding. Can't. Can't be there, there. We're priorities. sorry, we can't. We got priorities. We can't. We're sorry, but you know, making sisters <laughs> game married. I grew up with her, and then Michael's in Florida. So I mean, I, you about six hundred miles away. If you can, I know, please so. be there. Please be so, there. It will but, matter to the team. But 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 Macon and I might, might be like uh uh the movie of uh, the uh oh my gosh, what is it? The uh the, the movie where they go to Las Vegas and they lose the friend and then the guy's getting married. Hangover. 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 Yeah, we're gonna be like we're gonna be like hangover, <laughs> like 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 changing in the van, like you know, driving to Winston Salem, you know, after the game, like yeah, oh, I get us that. Totally by the time we we're gonna, it's gonna be in Cary, so by the time we time the wedding's over in the reception. Yeah, what time is we, it? The wedding's at three thirty, so well, that's three yeah. thirty. So depending upon when the reception is and when they leave, we can maybe get there. And if that's the case, I'm walking at a halftime to see the rest. Second half, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but uh, it yeah. just I yeah. just think think about this: if we win, you'll have been there and you'll have supported the team. I get mm-hmm. the idea of losing would suck that much more too, but be there because without yeah. you guys, that like you know, on a road game, they played four of the last five games on the road. Mm-hmm. They're back in North Carolina, and this is for potentially to go play for a championship. Please be there. Yes, please. And uh, and again, especially don't you know? Then day, you know, I know, understand. Everybody's talking about Winston Salem and the Winston Salem curse, but then day, Dorn's you know done done a good job in Winston Salem. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say there's been a letdown necessarily as as maybe you've seen in years past with with with, with Wake Forest. But again, then day, be there. It's gonna be a huge game. We're gonna be excited for it, and it's it. I and I mean. You know, let's do all we can here. But thank you all so much again for tuning in. And uh, as always, go pack, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. All right. Go pack, y'all.